Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here doing several examples for you of linear first order differential equations. If you're new to linear first order equations, go ahead and check out our intro video. We want to go ahead and show you these are the four examples we'll be working in this video. So if you have a particular example that you're interested in more than the others and don't want to watch them all, you can skip to that particular example in our video here. Looking at the first one here, we have y prime plus y is equal to 2x. This is already in the normal form, so we can go ahead and find our integrating factor. We'll make a note here that our p is actually 1. That's the function multiplying y there. So our integrating factor for this one, remember integrating factor for these linear equations is e to the integral of p dx. So in this case, it will be e to the integral of 1 dx, or just dx and e to the integral dx. Integral dx is just x, so our integrating factor for this one is actually e to the x. So we'll go ahead and multiply our entire equation by e to the x. Now in our intro video, what we did was distribute this e to the x also to the left-hand side. I'm going to not do that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it factored out. I don't need to worry about distributing so much. I am going to need it on the other side. But here I know that when I integrate this dx, this is actually a product rule of the integrating factor times y. So when we integrate this left side with respect to x, we'll actually get y times our integrating factor, y times e to the x there. That's our antiderivative because this is a product rule, remember. So over here, we'll get the antiderivative of 2x times e to the x dx. We can integrate this by parts over here, so we could say that u is equal to 2x and dv is equal to e to the x dx. And however you do your integration by parts, you can certainly do so here. If u is 2x, then we'll say du is 2 dx, and if dv is e to the x, then the antiderivative of that is just e to the x. So we'll use our integration by parts here. We still have y times e to the x, our integrating factor, on the left side. So uv is going to give us 2x e to the x minus the integral of v du is minus the integral of 2 e to the x dx. And this isn't so bad to do, right? So we get y times e to the x is equal to 2x e to the x minus 2 e to the x plus some constant, we'll say plus c. And now the only thing to do that remains for solving for y is simply to divide everything by the e to the x, right? So if I divide everything by e to the x, we'll get that y is equal to 2x, my exponential goes away in the first term, minus 2, it also goes away in this term, and then c divided by e to the x, we could also call that c e to the negative x. Okay, so that's our answer for our first example. Looking at our second one here, x times dy dx minus 2y is equal to x cubed. You'll notice this is not in the normal form, so we need to first get it in normal form before we do any integrating factor stuff. So I need to divide everything by x. That will give me dy dx minus 2 over x times y is equal to x squared. Now let's find our integrating factor. So my integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of p dx. Here my p is negative 2 over x. Don't forget the minus sign there. So it'll be e to the integral of negative 2 over x dx. So this will be a log rule, right? We'll get e to the negative 2 ln of x. And now just be careful. If we bump this negative 2 up, that becomes e to the ln of x to the minus 2, and e to the ln reduces x to the negative 2 is really 1 over x squared. So our integrating factor is actually 1 over x squared. We're going to multiply everything by that. Okay, so multiplying by 1 over x squared is going to give us, I'm going to, again, not distribute on the left side because I know what I'm going to get there when I do the antiderivative anyway. Here I will on the right side, x squared divided by x squared, we just get one there. 
And when we take the antiderivative with respect to x, remember this is a product rule, so when we take the antiderivative here, this will actually just give us y times our integrating factor. So we get y times 1 over x squared on the left side. So that's our antiderivative of the product rule on the left. Here we get the antiderivative of a 1 dx, also known as dx. And that's an easy integral to do, right? So we get y times 1 over x squared is equal to the antiderivative of 1 or dx is just x plus c. And now what we'll need to do is then multiply an x squared on both sides to get rid of that and solve for y. So we'll actually get that y equals x cubed plus some constant times x squared. For our third example here, dy dx plus 4y equals e to the negative x. So we are already in the normal form. We have dy dx by itself here, and it's linear. So we go ahead and just find our integrating factor straight away. Notice that our p here is 4. So our integrating factor will be e to the integral of 4 dx. And the integral of 4 is 4x. So our integrating factor for this one is e to the 4x. Multiply everything by e to the 4x. We'll say e to the 4x times dy dx plus 4y equals e to the negative x. Just like our previous two examples, I'm going to not distribute on the left side. e to the 4x times the rest of this left side is a product rule. On the right side, I will distribute, so e to the 4x times e to the negative x actually gives us e to the 3x. We'll add those exponents, right? So now antiderivative of this becomes y times the integrating factor, because this expression here, remember, is a product rule of y and the integrating factor. And then we'll actually need to do the integration on the right side. So we'll get equals the integral of e to the 3x dx. We'll go ahead and work that over here. So y times e to the 4x. The reciprocal of 3 will come out, so we'll get 1 third e to the 3x plus some constant when we do the antiderivative there. And now we'll need to divide everything by our e to the 4x over here to get y by itself. So we'll get y equals 1 third e to the 3x divided by e to the 4x would be e to the negative x if we subtract the exponents, plus c, now this is divide by this, so it actually becomes e to the negative 4x for our second term there. Let's look at our last example here. We have a function involving t instead of x, so we have t squared y prime plus 3ty equals sine of t, so we know that y is a function of t and this y prime is really dy dt. Either way though, it is not in its normal form, right? So I need to first divide by this t squared to get it in its normal form. So we really want to see this equation as y prime plus 3 over t times y is equal to sine of t over t squared. You look at sine of t over t squared and you go, boy, I can't integrate that. But remember, you still need your integrating factor. It's possible that your integrating factor is going to change this significantly on the right-hand side, how you would integrate. This we would definitely have a hard time integrating. So our p in this case is 3 over t. So our integrating factor is going to be e to the integral of 3 over t, actually dt here, right, not dx. Okay, so if we integrate this, this is a log rule. Here we get e to the 3 ln t. We'll go ahead and bump that 3 up and make it an exponent in the log so it becomes e to the ln of t cubed. e to the ln inverse operations just gives us that this is t cubed. So that's our integrating factor. We'll multiply both sides by t cubed. So I'm going to not distribute on the left side since I know that's just a product rule. And then multiplying by t cubed on this side actually gives us t sine t, and that's a bit better to work with there, I think, right? So now integrating both sides with respect to t, shortcut tells us on the left side, since this is a product rule, we do get y times the integrating factor on the left side. On the right side, we'll have to actually do the integral of t times sine of t dt. 
So now this integral on the right side is actually by parts. So I would say u is equal to t and dv is equal to sine of t dt. And if u is t, then I know that du is going to be 1 dt, also known as just dt. And if dv is sine of t, antiderivative, v would be negative cosine of t. And we'll use that info and do our integration by parts over here. So we'll get y t cubed still over here on the left is equal to uv, which would be negative t cosine t minus the integral of v du. Now I have a negative here as part of my v du, so I'll go ahead and put a plus out there in front of that and say antiderivative of cosine t dt. All right, we'll go ahead and do this last little bit of integration here. So negative t cosine of t plus sine of t, antiderivative of cosine t is sine t. And now I need to divide all the terms by t cubed. And now you can split each of these terms up separately if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as negative t cosine t plus sine t plus some constant over t cubed. If you feel much better about breaking it up and getting you know negative cosine t over t squared for the first term separately and then having the others, that's okay. But I think we'll leave this one here. All right, hopefully some of our examples of linear first order equation solutions have helped you out. We've got some initial value problem examples coming up in our next video in the series. Check those out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.